for the following exercise, determine whether the relation represents y as a function of x. All right, so in order to do that, we have to make sure that whatever equation we're given or whatever relation we're given, we solve it for y. Okay, we solve it for the thing we're trying to find if it is a function of the other thing. Okay, I have no idea what I just said, but eh, let's just move on. So the first step here is actually to solve this for y, right? So if I write that in my steps, by the way, are down here on the bottom left. So if I were to set this up, right, x is equal to y cubed, and I have to solve this for y, that means I have to get rid of the cube. So how do we get rid of the cube? Well, you can either raise both sides to the one-third power if you like. That's totally valid. Okay, the other way to do it would be to take the cube root. I mean, they're really the same thing. I'm just using different words. Okay, they're really saying the same thing. So I'm going to take the cube root. All right. So now um, when I do this, right, the cube root here will cancel the cube. Okay, now that just becomes y. All right, now this does not equal positive and negative y. Don't confuse this with when you're taking the square root of a squared value. All right, the reason why is because when you, when you cube a value, right, if, if you cube a positive value, the answer is positive. When you cube a negative value, the answer is still a negative, okay? As opposed to when you square a positive value, the answer is positive, and when you square a negative value, it's also positive. Okay, so this is the case we have to watch out for, the squared, not necessarily the cube. So you don't have to worry in this part about writing positive and negative. It's not the case here, okay? So y is simply then equal to the cube root of x, okay? And you can flip this around if you like. You know, y is, it doesn't really matter. They're both saying the same thing. So you can flip it around if you like this better. I personally like this better. Um, but now that's our, that's our equation. Now this allows us to then plug it into our graphing calculator if we like. So step two, all right, is going to be, you don't even need to necessarily plug it in. I mean, you can start guessing some values of x and just see how the graph is beginning to look. But it's easier if you're allowed to use that calculator to just plug it on in. So when you plug in this equation into your calculator, the graph is gonna look something probably like this. Oops, something like this, I think. And that didn't work, so let me try this, right? There we go, that looks a little better. So it's gonna look like that, okay? So this would be the, this would be how the uh, graph looks of this equation. Now, in order to determine whether this thing is a function or not, we now have to uh, run it through the vertical line test. All right, so let me just copy this graph on over here. And the vertical line test says that if a vertical line does not intersect the graph more than once, so if it intersects at zero or one time, then the graph is a function, okay? So I'm gonna draw some vertical lines. It only intersects the graph one time there. It only intersects at one time there. Remember the graph is in red. It only intersects at one time here, and et cetera. It only intersects at one time there as well. Okay, so that being the case, there's nowhere that I can draw this vertical line, in which case the vertical line will intersect more than once. Therefore, I can definitively state that this thing, okay, is a function. So it is a function. So the equation that was given to me in the beginning is indeed a function. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next question. Take care.